Hi, and welcome to another episode of Dealing TV q and I'm Mike, and I'm here with George. And we're here to answer your questions. If you point your browser to www.dealingtv.com, there's a little web form that you can fill out and submit your question. We can answer it right here on the air. There you go. As If you've been watching the episodes as we go along, the last couple episodes have been sort of how-to episodes, how to set things up, how to do stuff that we get common questions about. And so because of that, the questions have kind of piled up. So right. today we've got a selection of five different questions. We're going to go through fairly quick so the overall episode isn't too long. Yeah, just kind of random. Yeah, <laughs> just kind of random questions, you know, that don't really fit into one grouping. So it's right. just kind of a... Assorted, assorted questions, questions, like it says back here. Right. So okay. here we go. So uh, we're going to start with Agatha in San Jose. She says that she has several computers on her wireless network and all connect to the Internet. Is there a way to, a way to share files between the computers. Right. There is, and if, if you're using Microsoft, which she said she's using Windows XP, the best way is to go to Microsoft to show you exactly how to go step by step because she has some XP Home and XP Pro and it's a little bit different. Right. Basically, so, you can right click on a folder and in XP Pro, it's sharing security, XP Home. Like printing and sharing. At one point in the past, it used to be called file and print sharing and then it changed. But the key here is, we really strongly recommend you do not set up sharing for a laptop because if you take that laptop out of your house to say a hot spot, a coffee shop, a bookstore, right. then you're potentially sharing your files with everybody, not only in the store, but out in the parking lot within wireless range. Right. And that's not a good plan. Yeah, so, so and you don't want to have to like go in there and unshare them right. every time. Because you'll never to remember it. to turn it back on. Right. So, so we recommend. There you go. The DNS-323, a network attached storage device, the beauty of it is you can set up multiple accounts, each with different permissions for file sharing. You can set up FTP, as you see in one of our earlier episodes, so that you can share it when you're out on the road. So if you are at Starbucks, right. you could get to your FTP stuff. And, and so everything can be stored on one central spot, so all your computers can get to it, including your media players can get to it to, do, to view your pictures, your music, your movies, things like that. So well, and the other thing is, is if you're doing the file sharing through Windows, that computer has to be on. Right. And so you're going to have to go turn on that computer where this little guy just sits there and runs. Because he's designed to be left on all the time, whereas your computer really isn't. And eventually the fans are going to start squealing or dying, and bad things happen if you leave them on forever. Yeah. Plus it burns a lot of electricity, and that's a bad thing. And that'll raise your bill. Yeah. So go with the DNS-323. There and we so, go. There we go. Moving right along. Okay. So uh, John in Raleigh, North Carolina asked, how can I set up a wireless home without a router? There you go. Uh, so I take it that John's asking about... Uh, say maybe he has a wired router with his computer connected it and he wants to connect to another or even without a router he could have a desktop computer talk plugged directly into his cable or DSL modem and if you go under network connections again assuming it's Windows mm -hmm. there's a network sharing tab you can go to right. and that basically bridges your connection out to another port and so say you plug a wireless card into that desktop now all your traffic can go in the wired port and then back out the wireless Right. But again, this means but, that PC has to be on. <clears throat> You're burning the PC's resources right. because it's going to slow down. You know, either your connection is going to slow down because of stuff happening on that PC or the PC slows down because of stuff happening on the connection. Right. And you don't get the stateful inspection firewall, uh, the, the nice security, WPA2, all that good right. stuff, and all the cool features that come with the router like that MDNS. But he, might be he might be connecting He might be connecting his PC to a media player. And right. then that would still be in an ad hoc mode, but that still still sounds to me like he's got his computer directly connected to the cable modem, which I highly recommend you don't do. And you know, when you look at it, by the time you go and buy a wireless card to plug into your desktop, there are wireless routers out there that aren't a lot more expensive, and you get a lot more capability. Yeah. You know, while we'd recommend the DIR655, the top of the line, gigabit, WYSI fast, QoS, all that good stuff, there are other feeling products out there that are quite a bit less expensive if you're looking for just a budget, you know, short range connection. You don't need the reach, you don't need the speed. Right. You still get the firewall, which we'd really recommend. Turn on your security, set a password on it, and then you don't have Wireless to worry about security. it. Yeah, absolutely. So I mean it's to protect your files and your PC, um, highly recommend having a router, even if you only have one PC and that's not just because we work at a networking company, it's because you want to keep your stuff safe. Right. And, you know, saving a few dollars right now is potentially going to be a nightmare down the line because if you're hooked directly to the internet to your PC hoping that the you know, some built-in software firewall is going to protect yep. you good luck with that it's already um, there see like we <laughs> always say it's better to uh, protect your house from the bad guys out at the gate than it is to protect them at the front right. door 
you know, he's already in your yard at that point, so he's already on your property. Yeah. So that that's the same kind of thing with your router. You'd rather stop him with a hardware solution out there than let some software try and fix it. So and considering you're probably gonna yeah, you're probably gonna own the router for several years, you know, take a long look at the difference between the super budget one and one that costs a little bit more money but gives you a lot more capability. Right. Because you, you're gonna live with it for a while. So Well we use the word future proofing. You if go. you buy like the DIR six fifty five now, which is eight eleven N or draft eight eleven N you're you're going to be future proofing. It has the gig ports and all that stuff. So you know, in the future, when you do have more content that you're moving around, you have that that capability. So there you go. Take a look at the wireless routers, and good luck with that. All right. Okay. So it's Muhammad and Khartoum asks. He wants to know how does he connect his TV to his computer. There you go. So speaking of media players, right here on the bottom we have the DSM 520. This is our top of the line high definition media player. Right. And the basic idea is. There's a 320 and 520 family, 320 standard def, 520 is high def, 320 RD also includes a DVD player and a card reader. And a card reader. And With, yeah. right, so the, the trick is these guys plug in, there's connections on the back that plug directly into your TV. Composite, and then, component, HDMI, yeah, all the good stuff. audio. And then they have either wired or a wireless connection, a little antenna pops up here behind the coffee cup. And so that allows you to connect either wired or wirelessly across your home network to your PC and then from there out to the world. Right. And so that's the, the basic mechanism is that you can be in se separate parts of the house because not everybody has a wired connection going where they want it near their TV. So that's a wireless. And it lets you take whatever media you've got on your computer, maybe that pictures, music. You know, I, I know have tons of music I'd like to be able yeah, to play. Yeah, music, music. <clears throat> and then, of course, movies. And um, allows you to get them out to the big screen instead of sitting in front of your little, yeah. maybe not so little, but probably less social computer. So yeah, you can share it with your office. friends. Out of the cave. That's so me. take a look at the media players. If you go to dealing.com, uh, hit on hit products, and then the, the little grid will pop up. Click on media players, and the whole family shows up there. All of the different media players. And there's are details about all of them. Okay, so uh, Choi in Winnipeg uh, it wants to know what is the length restriction for a USB cable? That's a good question. Five meters. Five meters. But that's five meters to your first hub. Right. And so if you use a powered hub, like the one here, the DUB, this See, one's not only does it there. connect to your PC's USB port, but it also has power. There's a, a you know, regular jack, right. wall jack that powers this. For things like uh, USB hard drives and things, they need to be powered. But that also makes it act kind of like a repeater, where it's right. you know, going to have a stronger signal going out to another hub. And then what is the restriction on the number of hubs that we can use? The spec says five hubs and five meter cables. So you can daisy chain them along. I'm not sure I would recommend doing five of them with five meter cables between them, but you could. You could run a USB hard drive out in your backyard yeah. if you wanted to, but I'm not sure, you know. Why? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Another alternative is our newly introduced wireless USB hub and dongle, the DUB2240. Take a look at the website. There's a bunch of information on it. It's just very recently been introduced. The cool thing about this is that it can go up to 30 feet, and you get either a dongle that plugs in your PC, or some of the new laptops are coming with it built in, the right. wireless USB. And so then you put your USB hub up to 30 feet away wherever you want it, and now you plug USB cables into it. Right. And so say you want your printer you know, on the other side of the room, things like that, and you don't want to have to run the cable around the corner or across the carpet. It's a really neat alternative for that. Right. So there's some things you can look into there for alternatives. Yep. And there you go. And there you go. So that's going to... Take, uh, do it for our assorted questions episode of Dealing TV Q and A. And as always, go to dealingtv.com, submit your questions, and we'll try our best to answer them. Absolutely. And thanks for watching. Thank you.